John Bowden from Rock History Book, Today in History. It's August 7th. How is everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Nice to have you on here. And and Chase Tower, here we go, he said. Chase, I appreciate you being on here really early. We um, decided to start doing this live again, as I mentioned the last few days, because producing one of these things took five hours. <laughs> it's a new segment. We're talking about we're averaging 300 hits, 350 hits for these. So we can't spend five hours on a video like that. But eventually, I'm sure we will do it. And uh, we have a plan that after a year, we'll put on the same video, but add uh, put and add actual moving parts to it. So every single year that Today in History will have the same bones with a lot of extra stuff on it. So there you go. Because when someone dies, that's static. It doesn't change. That information stays the same. But we have to add to it every single year. So August 7th, remember, if you want to support the channel... Uh, we're in dire need of a new computer, and uh, we're asking if you can help us out. That would be great. We've never asked for anything in eight years. Basically, uh, there's a PayPal link in the description of this video, or else just join our Patreon. And here we go, August 7th, 1942, Hooked on a Feeling, uh, B.J. Thomas, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. He was born in Hugo, Oklahoma. We lost him in 2021, and he also did the Growing uh, Pains theme. Remember that? 1950, oh, and there he is in the background. Uh, 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 1951, Pete Way was the basis for UFO, also was in uh, Fast Way, Wasted, played with Michael Schenker Group and played with Ozzy Osbourne. We lost him August 14th, 2020 in, um, oh, we've got a picture for this guy. You might have, you might have recognized him, Bruce Dickinson. Heavy metal genius. I did put that on there on the title for a reason. The guy's an airline pilot. Yeah, you know, he, he's got degrees. I mean, he is a smart dude. If you read his book, the guy um, knows his way around words. But you know what? He's also incredibly people smart. Uh, Iron Maiden, of course, one of the leading bands in metal. And he he's the man, that's for sure. Okay, anyway, happy birthday to him. I'm glad he's still around. 1965, American singer-songwriter, Raul Melo, uh, with, with a, another band called the Mavericks, um, and had a 1998 hit which reached number four in the UK, Dance the Night Away. He was born on this day. American singer-songwriter Johnny Solinger, best known for lead vocalist of Skid Row from 1999 to 2015. He died on the 26th of June, 2021. Uh, he was 55 years old when he passed away, by the way. 1960, Jackie O'Sullivan, English singer and songwriter for Bananarama, was born in London in the United Kingdom. In 2011, Marshall Grant played bass with the Johnny Cash. He was born in Tennessee. Um, he passed away in 1983. And in 2021, Dennis Thompson, Thomas, singer for Cool and the Gang, died at the age of 70. Uh, here we go. We're getting into we're getting into the good stuff here. Herman's Hermits went number one on the U.S. charts with "I'm Henry the Eighth, I Am." Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. In uh, I've always loved that song. It's kind of a novelty-sounding song, but you gotta love it. In 1971, the Bee Gees started a four-week run at number one with the U.S. single. Have you watched the Bee Gees documentary, by the way? It is amazing. They went number one with "How Can You Mend a Broken Heart." It was the group's tenth U.S. hit and their first number one. Might recognize that. I almost put in the title an Elton John novelty song because Elton John's had a few songs, Crocodile Rock being one, that kind of had that novelty um, feel to it. Anyway, in 76, Elton John and Kiki D went number one on the U.S. singles chart with Don't Go Breaking My Heart, giving Elton his sixth U.S. number one song. 1980. Wow, this was... Uh, 1980, on this date... John Lennon began recording his final album. It wasn't the final album released. There were other things released from those sessions later on. Double Fantasy at the Hit Factory uh, in New York City. Man, not that long. It was December 8th when we lost him, remember? 1985, Barbara Streisand records the Broadway album. And you'll recognize this one, 1982. Fleetwood Mac started a five-week run at number one on the U.S. charts with Mirage, the band's third number one album. I did really like that album. I did and I didn't. You know, I, I thought if it was kind of soft. I always want Fleetwood Mac to go to a harder edge, like go your own way, which kind of never really, really happened. In 1996, ZZ Top 
Their album Eliminator is certified diamond for sales of 10 million copies in America. 2005, James Blunt went number one with the single You're Beautiful, one of the most hated songs in history by a lot of people. I mean, I understand why people like it. I play it on my radio show in Vancouver. Fits right in. It's a pretty song. But again, you got to understand a song that, that is a, a little syrupy like that might hit people the wrong way. In 2005, Mariah Carey was number one on the U.S. charts with We Belong Together. 2014, Ed Sheeran was number one on the U.K. charts with the album X. Events that happen. Well, this is kind of a big one. Speaking of Fleetwood Mac, Christine McVie joins Fleetwood Mac on this day in 1970. And Led Zeppelin make their their last live performance in the UK. It's in Nebworth. Uh, they had a, a, a two shows, and it was the last time. I used to always think Berlin concert was the last one, but it actually wasn't. They made this this one, but, you know, sad stuff, man. And I couldn't believe the headline when I first heard this. In 2005, walking in Memphis, singer Mark Cohn is shot in the head during a attempted carjacking. This happened in Denver, Colorado. And believe it or not, he lived, went on to pursue, to continue his, his music career. But man, I thought he was a goner. I mean, how often do you get shot in the head and you, he did that Pete Davidson takeoff of, of his song, Walking in Memphis, on Saturday Night Live this past season. He was funny. He was current all of a sudden, but I think he's always been current. Listen to Mark Cohn albums. They're amazing. He doesn't have a bad album. Go on Spotify after this and check them out and you'll go, why haven't I been listening to this guy? 2008, Elvis Presley, his peacock jumpsuit was sold at an auction for $300,000, making it at the time the most expensive piece of Elvis memorabilia sold at an auction. Bet you it's worth a lot more than that now. And in 2008, the police wrap up their reunion tour in New York, Madison Square Garden. Uh, their first tour since 1986 lasted 151 shows. The third highest grossing of all time. There you go. That's today in history. I'm going to read some of your comments. I kind of like doing it live again. Anyway, again, Jeff Tower, uh, Chase Tower, thank you for, we know a guy named Jeff Tower, that's why I said that, for going on nice and early. Mark Burchett, good afternoon, John. Hello, hello. Uh, Sue Bailey, hi, John. Um, Life Track, hi, fans, and John. Life Track, Lennon, yeah. You know, it would be the anniversary of, uh, of that big, you know, that 1980, December 8th, when we do, did lose him. Uh, Mark Burchett, Elton John's best song, Elderberry Wine. And it's amazing how on Don't Shoot Me, which that album is from, there really isn't a bad track on that. I think Don't Shoot Me is the closest, not my favorite Elton John album, but of all the Elton John albums, if you don't know it, please check it out today. It is the one that has Teacher I Need You, Elderberry Wine, um, uh, um, What's uh, uh, High Flying Bird? There was just so many great songs on that album that they all sounded like singles. They, it was an amazing thing for Elton. And, and to this day, when I pick up that album, I, I, I have a little extra fervor in, in me just to say, wow, this is such a... And I keep going back to it. So it's one of my top five Elton John albums for sure. Uh, pause to purr. Hi, John. Hope you and Shannon enjoying the Sunday. Thanks so much for doing this live. Really enjoy it. Thank you. Um, what a story about Mark Cohen, Alex Knight. Isn't that crazy? You know, um, I go off and on on believing in luck. Uh, I, I won $10,000 in the lottery in 1990. 90, yeah. In the fall of 1990. And I remember, I remember having no money. I just had no money and I was praying and I was not a religious guy back then. I was more of a spiritual cat and really believe in a lot of religion, but I had a lot of religious friends and we were all happy. And uh, I remember praying that night and saying, I need some money. I'm just as crazy. I'm waiting for my full-time job, which I'm currently still have at that radio station to come through. And I went down with my last $5, bought a lottery ticket, went to A&W, bought a breakfast sandwich, bought the, bought the sandwich first. And I, and I, it was a scratcher, scratch and win, we call them in Canada. And I won 10 grand. And you, the feeling you think you're going to have, it's not a lot of money, but it's still, I won 10 grand. And it kept me going till my job went full time, became full time and I had money again. And uh, it was an amazing thing. So I remember going, am I lucky or did I pick up on a vibe, you know, that, that maybe I was going to get something that made me brave enough to pray? I don't know. Mark Cohen. 
getting shot in the head. That's where I was going with this, by the way. You go, wow, like, is that luck? Is that, you know, it's that old thing. Are we just rocks crashing in space? Are, are we? I don't know. I hope not. But that is, I'd say that's, uh, there's a lot of luck there. Uh, Chase Tower. Thanks, JB. Thank you. Life track. They prayed for you, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. You know, if a religious person wants to talk about anything, I'm always very open to it because I'm intrigued by theology. I've always been. And I used to be quite religious myself. But you wonder sometimes, a chicken or the egg thing, what's going on out there? You know, um, I've had several, I'm writing a book right now in my life and I've had several instances that make no sense. And you probably do too. You go, wow, that's uncanny. That's, a, that's strange that that happened. And the hardest moments of your life, if you wait a little while, a lot of the times you turn a corner, you don't know what at the time, you turn a corner and all of a sudden your life turns around. You know, it's the old story my uncle used to tell me. Every, all every young man uh, in the village go to war. They're all downtrodden. They're going to war. One guy, he's working in the fields with his father and his father says, I can't afford to lose you. It's a tough thing. I'm paraphrasing this story. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're working in the farm, but he breaks his leg and he can't go to war and he can't work with his dad. It's, he's screwed. But then everyone in that plane from that small town get killed on the way to the war or something. Put whatever instance you want in there. The boy on the farm's leg gets better and he's still there. I mean, the thing is, cliche as it sounds, you never know what's on the other side. I, Mark Cohen's still here and I'm glad he is because he's such an amazing artist. Please go listen to his albums on, on Spotify. He doesn't have some, he, again, I'll say it, he doesn't have a bad album. He's just, there's some songs he has on that you're going, this should have been a hit. Doesn't matter, it's still around, you still listen to it, still share it with people. So, I've kind of made this into a Mark Cohen thing. I love Mark Cohen. Love, 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 love. I received a little flack today. I'm not going to tell you who it was uh, about uh, a story we did. And sometimes you, with the internet, you ask a question to an artist, they'll give you an answer. And if the, another artist who might be mentioned in there uh, has a problem with it, they'll get a hold of us and they'll say, hey, that's not true or that didn't happen. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means they don't want it out there. So... Um, every, every three, four months we deal with something like that. And so that's my life. That's why I have insurance. <laughs> I have to, um, oh, Chase, uh, I'll, I'll check him out. Thank you. Alex like, yeah, that could be looked at bad luck, not good luck. Yeah, exactly. Cause some people say, well, he lived, that's good luck. And they're going, well, yeah, but he got shot. That's bad luck. Glass half full, half empty, right? Uh, Big Dog Ron, AZ, uh, since your live stream about death of Judith uh, Durham, I've been watching videos about her life. What an amazing talent. What an amazing life too. Yeah. Whenever this happens, it's an opportunity for us. And people always say, why don't you celebrate people while they're alive? Um, we just don't have the time most of the time. I'm going to do a thing on Patrick Simmons of the Doobie Brothers because I love him so much. He's the glue in that band, has been since the, you know, the Michael McDonald, Tom Johnston, but, <clears throat> but we don't have time to do all these things. But when they pass away, I'm saying, but a lot, it's an opportunity for us to, to look back. Yeah. But anyway, thank you for everyone that, that came aboard today. And thank you for the folks who are donating and helping us buy this new computer. We're three quarters there to buying this computer. So it makes an awful lot of, it makes a big difference for us. Uh, if you want to make a donation, there's a PayPal link in the description or join our Patreon. But Thank you, and I love you, man. Thank you for always being there. It's nice that you come on and chat with me. It means a lot to me. This is kind of my life. This is what I do. I've been on radio 40 years, but coming on live is a fun thing for me because I've been on live in, in radio for so many years. I'm not on live on the current show that I do, which is one of the reasons I come on live to do this. So there you have it. So thank you for supporting me. I can't say this enough. I get a little mushy, you know, about this and sentimental, but it's... Yeah, yeah, I'm out there. This is my life. This is what I do. And Shannon helps an awful lot too. And we're always trying to make ends meet. And we can, we can make it work. But when you need a new computer, you go, oh no. You know, so anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, thanks, John. Pasta Purr. Have a great day. You too. And everyone who joined on today, have a good one today in history. If it's your birthday, August 7th, well, happy birthday to you. And again, I always say this every day. A lot of things happen on your birthday. If it's not your birthday... Pass it along to someone who's celebrating a birthday. I think they'd be interested. 
Take good care of yourself. And I'll be back tomorrow. And if anything breaks tonight, I'll be back tonight. We've got two, three more videos coming up on Rock History Music uh, before midnight tonight. Take good care.